Hi guys, so I want to come to you guys really quickly and talk to you about this very important topic, depression and suicide, and it's going to have to be really quick because I'm actually, I'm actually outside my therapist's office right now, so I'm getting ready to go to therapy. Um, I don't know if I told you guys that I'll be in Washington for the first time, and you don't know, but I told you guys before that I am. So, so I'm actually gonna go to my therapist. I have like 10 minutes, so I want you guys to please help me keep the time so I don't go over. So if you're watching this, please let me know when it is 5:05 Pacific Standard Time. That would be 8:05 Eastern Standard Time. Somebody please let me know. Just comment and say time's up. Okay, now I have to come back. But I was motivated to this video because this is a really important topic. I feel like it often gets pushed under the rug, you know. A lot of people are affected by this issue of depression. You know, depression is the leading cause of suicide. More people die, more people who commit suicide have depression. So usually, if you're a person has committed suicide, there's a stance of 50% chance that that person was depressed. And this issue is so important, you guys, because depression affects so many Americans. And it's not a race issue. So it's not African Americans. It's not white Americans. It's not, it has nothing to do with race. Everything to do with a person's mental health and well being. And statistics can be alarming, you guys, because here it is. Men commit suicide at a rate um, three and a half times more than women. Women attempt suicide two and a half times more than men. So while men commit suicide, I mean successfully, they successfully die by suicide. They do it more than women, right? They succeed at committing suicide more than women. And there are ways that you can screen to tell if a person is suicidal. Um, that's part of the work that I do. When I see clients, we have to we have to screen to make sure that a person is not suicidal, having suicidal thoughts. What it means to be suicidal is that you've been thinking about killing yourself, point blank. You know, whether it's by a gun or overdosing or jumping off of a bridge or whatever the means is you have been contemplating killing yourself that's what it means to have suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideation and it's so unfortunate because those one day it gets off and gets up 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 and no, please let me know when 505 comes you guys like give me a warning for the time so that I don't go over and I miss my therapy appointment okay so there are ways that you can tell if a person you know is suicidal the easiest way is just to ask point straight out are you thinking about killing yourself you know straight to the point you know if a person is not suicidal they're not gonna say they're thinking about killing themselves but if a person is suicidal, chances are they will admit to thinking about killing themselves, you know? And you can look to see if there are certain signs that you can tell as well. So, some of the indicators are um, if a person uses drugs, you know, a lot of times they are drug using places. Like I said, 
said, there are days we feel our worst. We just feel like it's hard for us to get through the day, but we make it to see another day. It's one thing to feel sad, you know, but let's say your dog died, you have a death in the family, you lost a best friend, you know, you lost a job, um, you didn't win the lottery, you know, there's reasons that you feel sad. Your, your team lost um, the game, things like that, you know, it's pretty common, right? Everybody feels sad. Sadness is normal. The issue is, is that when you have sadness, sadness mixed with helplessness, meaning you feel like you can't even help yourself. You know, you're looking towards everybody else for help because you feel like you are just so, your life is helpless. Hopeless. You don't see a future for yourself. You know, how people can look and say, oh, in five years, I see myself doing this. You know, 10 years, I'm going to be doing this. You actually have a future ahead of yourself. People who are chronically depressed cannot see that future for themselves. It doesn't exist. Um, there is usually um, a lack of sleep or sometimes people sleep too much. So you can not get enough sleep where you have trouble falling asleep or you can sleep just too much, sleeping way too much. You have people that sleep 10 and 12 and 14 hours a day. Something is wrong. Did I say isolation is also a key factor? Um, what else am I missing? So we have sadness, we have helplessness, hopelessness, um, not enough sleep, so sleep is a factor, even eating, eating too much, not eating enough, you know, those are all symptoms of depression. And um, it feels like I'm missing something. That's why I can't, I, I cannot rush this topic, but I feel like it was on my heart to do it, so I have to do it. But those are some key symptoms. Now, if you know somebody in your life that you see meets the criteria for a depression because those symptoms map onto depression, then that's something that you should take notice to. Think about depression. It's something that can end, that's something that can impact us at any stage of our lives. So it can be a baby can be depressed, children can be depressed, adults can face depression, people of all different ages can face depression and depression if it goes unchecked unfortunately people cope with depression by committing suicide people who make jokes about it are those who thinking about it when said and alone but won't tell they are upset or depressed I mean it's hard for people I think to admit that you are depressed there's a stigma surrounding depression and even mental illness I mean the fact that millions of Americans have depression, this is not something that is not uncommon. Depression is a very common mental illness. So many people are living with depression right now. You guys who are watching this, somebody is experiencing depression, unfortunately. And it's, it's sad, you know, because you think about it, our society, the way it's structured, it really, it basically conditions us, you know what I'm saying, to work hard, to put all these hours in on these jobs that don't compensate us enough. Working so hard, you know, everybody's trying to compete with the Joneses, you know. And that's one aspect, you know. And then you have loss is a significant factor. People, when you lose something in your life and you have trouble coping with that loss, facing depression there's different ways that people we can conceptualize depression you know, depression is psychological you know where it's something that's going on within your thought process within your psyche but it also can be biological in nature it's something that's going on within your brain you get what I'm saying there's a deficiency in your brain in the way of serotonin dopamine that's causing you to feel this lethargy. Oh, that's what it was. So fatigue. I know I was missing an important symptom. Fatigue is a big one, you guys. How can I forget fatigue? <laughs> it's like the key common indicator. But 
you know, it's sad because in working in this field, I've been in this field since I was in my 20s, early 20s, and, you know, approaching 35 now, it's like, it's, it's very easy to spot when a person is depressed. You know, I'm not, y'all not going to tell me to keep track of time. Y'all not going to tell me what time to look. I'm to check the time just to make sure because, see, I knew y'all wasn't going to tell me. It's 5.07. All right. So I'm going to end this video. I can do a part two. But it's, I mean, this issue is really important with you guys that we have this discussion because if we can, if a life can be safe, all the better, right? And it's very sad. You know, this is a very sad topic, but it's important. It's something that we need to have. So let me go ahead in this video and head into my therapist's office and I will catch you guys in the parts two. Please share this video with all of your friends and family because this is an important, 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 important topic. I can't emphasize that enough. Like, we need to open up about it. You know, I think there's such a big stigma surrounding mental illness that people don't open up and talk about it. It's like people feel ashamed. It's almost like you committed a crime. If you if you have mental illness or you feel depressed, it's almost as if it's a crime to be depressed. You know, to say you feel depressed, right? Or even to say you're suicidal. And we're going to talk about what happens if you are feeling suicidal and how to go about getting help if you do feel suicidal. So I'm going to come back and do a part two after my therapy session. I'll catch you guys in an hour. All right. Catch you guys later. Bye.